Most every player dreams of moments like this. Like this. And like this. In today's video, I want to bring you the three things that I've seen holding teams back. Hey guys, my name's Alex and I'm a semi-pro Valorant coach. I've been a coach in the Challengers League for the last couple of splits and I've also worked with some players who've now made it to VCT. In today's video, I'm going to bring you the three most common things that I've seen holding teams back and how you can work on them, how you can bring your team success. No matter what you're trying to improve at, both studying and preparation are essential to finding your success. In Valorant, this is no different. This may seem like a no-brainer, but let me go a little bit deeper into what I mean. Most people approach their practice like this. They look at the time that they're free, they look at the time that their teammates are free, and then they think, okay, let's just play lots, right? We just fill all that time with play. Although this is a good place to start, it's just, it's just not enough. We can't just play a lot and expect to win. Although the amount of practice is important, of course, the most important thing is the quality of this practice. I believe in the old saying, quality over quantity is essential here. And this is where preparation comes in. Now, even in well-established teams, this could be done poorly. Surface level preparation is easy. For example, we might just establish a default where we talk about which position each person will play. Now, this is all well and good, but is it enough? How far can we take this preparation? I'm a believer that if you get all the details right, the rest will follow. The most important thing is that everyone knows what they are doing and why. The really key part of this is that if two players aren't on the same page, then you fall out of sync, right? And you may as well be playing a ranked game. The detail should cover many different varieties, different situations, different agents, and against different teams to build out your shared understanding of how you want to play the game. And this is ultimately what becomes known as a strat book. Going down to this granular level of detail, I believe, is essential. No laziness nothing left unthought, you're prepared for everything, because your opponents are going to be. Now, team fundamentals is a topic that comes up all the time, you hear it in VCT. Fundamentals, so played fundamentally better. So, what does that really mean? At the end of the day, this is a combat game, right? Getting kills wins rounds, and therefore getting better at killing people and not dying is essential. Okay, sure, this is obvious, but how do we actually do it? The most fundamental advantage you can have in any game, in any team game, where you can kill your opponents, is simply a man advantage, being together, playing with your team. I don't just mean you've killed a guy and you're 5v4 or 5v3, you know, you can still lose those rounds. You need to play together. More people, more damage, faster time to kill, higher chance of trading. Sure, your opponents can hit a quick headshot, but all we can focus on is what's within our locus of control the things that we can do to give us the best chance of winning. Over thousands of games you will play, it's all statistics after all. And so this means that we must be very effective at playing together. This is something that many, many teams, even the best in the world, get wrong. This could be due to individual misplays, failures of communication, or just poor awareness. But ultimately, it comes down to our ability to play with our teammates, to support them, and to trade them out. Now this definitely isn't an easy set of skills to build, but I'll explain the three things which will help take your team to the next level. To be honest, each of these topics could get its own video. Let me know which one you'd like to see in the next one. Number one, the first thing that a team needs to know how to play together is clear protocols, clearly defining how you do things. I think preparation is a great example of this, but in the same way, how are we going to approach our pre-round? What do our comms look like? How do we approach retakes? What are we going to do when we go into a post plan? How are we going to call in and execute? The structures of these things is something that's super important and essentially defines how we're going to operate as a team. The second point is clear communication. This means being precise with our choice of words, clear with how we react to what each other says and having a clear structure and hierarchy in our comms. We need to know who says stuff, 
whose job it is to say those things, who's going to listen, who's going to lead, and all of these things need to be talked about outside of the game so that in the game you can perform at your best. And the third and final and probably most important point here is trust. Trust is built by building our understanding of each other, how each other think, both in the game and out of the game. It's a skill that's often overlooked in lower tier teams. Oftentimes, if you just trust a call and you execute it together, it doesn't matter whether the call was good or not, you just did it together and it will win, regardless of whether the call was correct or not. The vast majority of these fundamental mistakes, even in pro play, come down to a failure in one of those three areas. Now, I wouldn't be much of a performance coach if I didn't mention a mental aspect of the game that's often overlooked. And this is simply how we practice. Playing with intention is simply the act of actively bringing your focus to the task at hand, onto the games and the specific things that you want to improve at, that you want to work on, whether that's your movement, your communication, how you're positioning, or something to do with your team. Now this can fail on multiple levels. The first is simply not having anything to focus on. You didn't have any goals in mind when you went into your practice. Playing without a goal in mind is a basic prerequisite of this kind of mindset of trying to grow. And it's essential. You want to become a professional player, right? But how do you break that down? What do you have to do to be a pro? Trying to achieve this kind of goal is kind of like seeing a distant mountain on the other side of an island and there's a massive forest that you have to cross. And you just start walking into this forest and it's so dense and you can't see out of it and it's just dark and you haven't thought about how you're going to get to where you want to go and you just get lost in the forest. And this is just a very slow and inefficient way of getting where you want to go. What you need to do is to come up with a plan, look for a map, right? And that's essentially what I'm talking about here is you need to kind of have waypoints, things that you're going to move towards and use that to guide you towards where you want to get to. Simply, without a plan, can end up making your journey so much longer and harder than it needs to be. Think of your dream, break it down into small goals, and break those goals into a plan. Short-term, achievable things that you can do, things that you can focus on. And now, the second point of failure of this is lack of focus on these goals. Writing these goals down is a great place to start, but to change anything, it takes some energy. To change your mind, to improve it, to build it into that of a professional player, it takes focus. It can be hard, it can be exhausting, but it is necessary to make the changes that you want to make. It is this trade of energy that brings about the improvement that you desire. You can't be lazy, you have to really go in, have goals in mind and actively take the steps to improve on those things. Just blindly playing the game isn't going to get you anywhere, you're just going to get lost in the forest. You have to remember, it's only you who can do the work. Not me, not your coaches, not your teammates, only you. So guys, just to wrap this video up, here's a quick recap of the three things that you need to remember when planning out your team's growth. Number one, preparation. Making sure that you as a team are prepared when you go into a game, you know what you're going to do. The second one, fundamentals. Making sure that you're playing together and remembering the three things that I spoke about earlier in the video. And finally, practice. How you practice. Practicing with intention, having clear goals in mind and going in and focusing on them. If you keep these things in mind, as your team grows, you will avoid a lot of problems that many teams suffer from. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please hit the like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. If you guys would like to see more content like this, drop a comment down below, let me know what you'd like to see. Thank you so much, see you in the next one.